When you drive on Highway 63 between Oskaloosa and Eddyville, you probably do not know that 120 years ago, there was once a bustling community located on the east side of 63 near the current landfill. Muchikinuk, a multi-ethnic coal mining town of 2,000 souls, is now gone, with only a cemetery marking the fact that it once existed. Muchikinuk is not the only ghost town in the Muchikinuk Creek Valley. Given, Cullen, Lost Creek, Excelsior, and Piquet also disappeared with the coal. The village of Evans was once inhabited by thousands of people. Its population today is 60. Many Iowans are unaware of the state's coal mining industry, which prospered from the 1870s until the mid-1920s. Mines ranged from dozens of acres in size to the mom's and pop's backyard pits. The Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship documented the location of 3,071 mines, but it is believed that as many as 6,000 mines may have operated in Iowa. From 1883 to 1900, Mahaska was by far the primary coal-producing county in Iowa. From the beginning of the industry, Muchikinic Creek Valley has been the leading seat of coal extraction in the county. The ridges on each side of the creek were underlaid by good beds of coal. For this reason, the Muchikinic was also dubbed the Coal Valley. Several companies came to the Muchikinic Valley to mine coal. At one point, there were 1,700 acres of active mines in the valley. In the latter 19th and early 20th centuries, local mines employed hundreds of miners, including European immigrants and African Americans. They lived in the mine camps of Muchikinic and Lost Creek which offered housing, schools, taverns, restaurants, churches, and stores. Mines were generally open for only 10 years or even less. Once the coal was exhausted, the camps were quickly dismantled. The Iowa coal production quickly declined after 1920, leaving little trace of the bustling communities. Iowa's soft and smoky coal was inferior to the good anthracite from Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Railroads began buying coal from other states, and soon train engines shifted to diesel fuel. Though little remains of these communities, mining itself left deep scars in the landscape. As far as we know, there are 3,250 acres of mines in the Muchikinic Valley more than half of it underground. Strip mining left about 1,500 acres of pitted landscape. Little vegetation can grow on the infertile areas. Mine areas are prone to erosion and the runoff brings hundreds of tons of sediment into the Muchikinic Creek every year. Mine drainage is often acidic and contains metals or other pollutants. Fortunately, the Mines and Minerals Bureau have reclaimed more than half of the Muchikinic abandoned mines so far and is planning on reclaiming another 55 acres in the next few years. Hi, my name is Vince Sitzman. I work for the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship, Division of Soil Conservation and Water Quality. So uh, our program is federally funded. Essentially, we get money from the current active coal mining that's taking place around the country. Every ton of coal that's mined today, there's a tax associated with that. That funding then comes back to the states to help reclaim some of their mines that were mined pre-1977. So, uh, we're standing on top of a, a spoil pile here. And uh, I don't know if you can see it over to my edge here, but it's nearly a vertical drop. We're probably talking about 80 to 100 feet down. You see the stream down below, the orange stream down below. And so uh, this is what we would consider to be a, a hazardous nuisance. And so a lot of times as the dredge went through to mine the coal in the state of Iowa, when they cut their swath trying to get down to the coal, they would leave a high wall. And so on a lot of these sites, we have high walls. I don't know if you can see it over here. We have a fair amount of tree cover right now, but there's obviously a high wall over across the valley over there. That would have been the last cut for the dredge, also very dangerous. So uh, those priority features allow us to use the federal funds to reclaim these sites. My name is Randy Cooney. I work for the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship. 
I'm in the Division of Soil Conservation and Water Quality and specifically in the Mines and Minerals Bureau. I serve as a project coordinator. What happened in the mining process is they would take off the overburden on the top and they would throw it over into a pile and they would create these long windrows of spoil as they got down low enough to get the coal out of the ground. And then they just left the piles like they were and this bad uh, shale material and stuff would get piled up and over years you can see the erosion that has occurred. It's very acidic. You don't see anything growing on it except for a few scrub trees here and there and so it needs to be treated. Our mass grading projects and reclamation would take this pile and move it somewhere else to soften the slopes. We treat that soil and try to get something growing. But we can give you a perspective of why it is considered a hazard because from a public safety access here, somebody could easily tumble off from this thing and get injured if they were out here hiking around. And those are the things we're trying to mitigate through the reclamation process. We talked about the hazardous features at the other site, but one of the things we didn't see over there was the acid mine drainage, which is a product of the acidic materials and with seeps that could possibly come from an underground mine or just washed off during rain events. We start to see the water, uh, water streams, channels, whatever, start to look like this, where the iron precipitates out. You start to see that discoloration in the water. And then it would eventually go on down and off-site into a water, a larger watershed. So these are the types of things that if we can, by doing reclamation work, we try to slow that. Any active year will have anywhere between two and six to seven projects that are in their active stages of reclamation. So that might be all the way from the preliminary design phase into the construction phase. And then uh, the phase at the end, when, which we'll go out there and evaluate our sites for, for five years to make sure that the reclamation work is functioning properly and, and the reclamation is a success. So here in Iowa, we have about 300 surface coal mines within the state. Uh, our program was established in 1983. Since that time, we've, uh, we've reclaimed approximately 100 of those sites, so we still have a couple hundred more to go. Um, a lot of work to do. We start the initial phase, we visit the site, it's been inventory, we look at the hazardous features that were left behind from the mining, specifically those that could cause uh, personal harm or damage to people or livestock. So those priority features are what we use as a tool to evaluate what sites we're going to reclaim. The process can take anywhere from two to three years, even just in the design phase before we get to construction. Depending on the funding source uh, availability, it may be another year or two before we get to work. So that's where I say the patience has to be before we can get to it. And eventually we take that thing to construction where I'll work with the contractors that would do uh, submit a public bid to do and complete the work. Once we've got that done, we have staff as well that oversees that construction activity all the way to the end of construction, which will take anywhere from a year and a year and a half to complete. So it's a lengthy process, but it's one that uh, has great rewards as we restore the landscape to more natural conditions. Uh, our typical designs, we, we kind of think we have two. More of a traditional, which would uh, resemble terraces and intakes that help manage the storm water as it moves off the site. We soften up the slope lengths, and we've done that for many, many years. More recently, we've got into natural landform grading designs, which don't use terraces, they don't have intakes, but rather it tries to mimic the natural landscape around. We work with the local soil and water conservation district offices and the NRCS staff. Uh, they're, they're excellent conservation managers, land managers. We try to connect landowners with them as well for post-reclamation management. Uh, it's quite important that we can get those hazardous features taken care of, but the long-term care of this site is really what's going to make it work and the reclamation complete. Uh, it's essential that we work with the local district offices to help with that, with whether it's a flash grazing, possible uh, hay cutting, not encouraging at all any kind of row cropping, it won't support it, but there's things that can be done with proper care that will help this thing long term and that's how we're going. So our local uh, folks in those field offices make a big impact for us long term. My name is Mitch Chilton and I'm out here, uh, this is a piece of property that my wife and I own. We've had 
the last year and a half. This is part of the uh, Van Kooten rec Reclamation, so this is a reclaimed coal mine, um, even though it doesn't look like much of a coal mine uh, anymore. So uh, in the background, you can see different grasses growing, um, and this was all part of a uh, you know strip mine and was built with, with waste. Um, and in, early, in the early 90s, it was reclaimed. Um, my goals for the property are to improve the habitat for uh, wildlife use, specifically upland birds, and more specifically bob white quail. Um, management of the property itself is also important. So um, different practices that we're going to be implementing, or we have implemented um, over you know the last year and the, the coming years are going to be, uh, we've done uh, a prescribed burn, so specifically uh, the ground behind me was burned this March, uh, and then we will be continuing to burn different sections of the ground on kind of a rotational basis. So that way, we are uh, creating um, you know different uh, a variety of, of habitat on the landscape, which is good for the management of quail. Good land stewards like Mitch Chilton make all the difference for the Muchakinnick Creek watershed. With their dedication and the expertise of the mines and minerals staff, we can repair the scars left by the coal mining industry and nurse the Muchakinnick Creek back to health.